Before you do your next project, check out this video. I want to show you what we have going on. We've been working on this for the past couple of days. And we've gone ahead and we have already removed all of the bottom paint from this side of the whaler. And now we're ready for some type of an epoxy barrier coat. And that leads us to our first guest. We have the pleasure of having the general manager of a very big anti-fouling paint company on the program today. His name is Steve Schultz, and he is a wealth of information. Let's go meet him. Hey, Steve. Hi, John. Man, thanks for coming by. My pleasure. This is excellent. I want to talk a little bit about osmotic blisters of the hull. A lot of people don't realize that the anti fouling paint isn't really protecting them away from water intrusion. What's going on here? Well, probably the best way to understand that, John, is to first look at the way boats are built. Typically, you have a mold in which mold-release wax is applied. Then the process starts by building the boat from the outside in. The polyester gel coat is then sprayed in, and multiple coats of chopped strand and resin build the boat all the way in. Then this boat's lifted out of that mold. Whenever you put a boat into water and it's fiberglass, a gel coat can be porous in nature and it can kind of absorb the water. But when you haul it back out, oftentimes the water goes right back out through the gel coat. You never have a problem. But a lot of times what happens is when you do that, these blisters form. What's going on? Well, in a perfect world, you wouldn't get water absorption in the hull. But what's really happening is you're getting water accumulation in the hull. And there can be actually wicking that takes place within some dry fibers within the layup of the hull. To best explain it, if I described something from high school chemistry, the process of osmosis, which is uh, liquids in areas of high concentration wants, want to equalize to areas of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. In the case of a boat, what happens is the water accumulates, mixes with some chemicals within the layup of the hull, builds pressure, it wants to release that pressure back out into the sea. If it comes against a part of the gel coat that it can't get out, it starts pushing against it. That causes it to stretch and that ultimately creates a blister in various forms. But you can prevent blisters from ever occurring to begin with. And we're not talking about brand new boats here. We're talking about, you know, boats that are 10 years old, 15 years old. If they don't have blisters, you can still do the process that we're going to do today. If they have blisters, you can fix them and do the process that we're doing today. But blisters can occur in a matter of weeks. They can also occur decades down the road. This is not any kind of, there's no given formula on who's going to get blisters and who's not, right? That's correct. Okay. But an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and that's what we're going to be getting into next, right? That's correct. What we have here is something called an epoxy barrier coat. And Steve, it's a two-part epoxy, but it's a special type of product, isn't it? That's correct. Um, a typical epoxy primer would have resin in it, and it would have pigment. And, and you can visually see that in an electron microscope. At close-up view, you'll see pigments in round formations, not unlike you might have gravel in a driveway. That's not the ideal product for application underwater because water can pass through that just like rain will pass through a driveway. What we've done with these water resistant epoxy primers is we build a leafing effect within the primer itself. It works like shingles on a roof where you put multiple layers of a pigment, the water cannot find its path through there and then that goes on top of the gel coat. The important thing about the prevention system is to put it on top of the gel coat and get the benefits of the gel coat plus the epoxy primer in addition to that. And that is your best route, best way to go about preventing blistering. Who are the big players that make the epoxy barrier coats that make the anti fouling things? Uh, Pettit makes a, an epoxy barrier coat. Um, the national retail stores also have some brands and our Interprotect 2000 has been on the market for about 17 years. For okay, this and that's the reason that I asked you to be on the show today is because you pretty much have the largest market share in this whole field and that's you correct. really do know what's going on here. Let's talk about what we've already done. We've gone ahead and we've sanded the boat. We use 60 grit sandpaper. We've got all the anti fouling paint removed. If it's a brand new boat, that you want to protect. What you need to do is you need to de-wax gel coat. Remember Steve was saying that the first step that the boat manufacturer uses is a mold release wax inside their molds and then they spray in that gel coat. Well that wax gets permeated into the gel coat and if you don't de-wax it, nothing's going to really stick to it. So you got to use some type of a de-waxer. Now our boat's from 1980. It's already been de-waxed. It's already been bottom painted many, many times. And we're kind of in the mode here to where we can start applying the inner protect. 
How many coats do we need to go here? It's important that you get 12 to 14 mils of a dry film thickness. On a boat like our project boat, that would be two gallons of paint. Well, Steve, we're going to do it, and I'm going to grab my tools. And if you give me a hand mixing some of this stuff up, but I do want you to stick around because after we put on this barrier coat, I want you to tell me a little bit about the different antifoulin paints. Deal? Very good. Let's do it. We've gone ahead and we have mixed together the two-part formula for our epoxy barrier coat. I want to real quick take you through some of the tools that we're going to use in order to apply it. We have a paint insert along with a roller. I've got an extension handle mounted on it. Notice that I'm again wearing safety glasses as well as gloves. You do not want to touch any type of epoxy to your skin. Also want to talk to you about the tape line that we've gone ahead and pulled. You see, when we're applying the barrier coat as well as the antifoulin paint on the boat, we want to have a nice defining edge, and that's what the tape line is for. But what you want to do to give a real nice defining line is take a rag, and you want to rub this tape going back and forth just like this. Now, this is called burnishing the tape. And what's happening is the friction created between the rag and the top side of the masking tape, well, that's heating up the adhesive on the back side, and it's really giving you a good bond. Now, let me show you the roller that we're using. This is a 3 8 inch nap roller. You want to use a 3 8 inch nap roller. Don't use the thin ones here, because the first coat of barrier coat that we're trying to apply to the hull needs to be very thick, okay? And if you use those thin rollers, it's going to kind of hurt you. Now, Steve was saying that we need to put a full 12 mils of protection onto the boat. That's going to equate again to about two full gallons. And a little tip, whenever you're bottom painting or you're putting on the epoxy barrier coats or whatever, is start at the very keel, which is the very bottom of the boat, and you want to pull towards you. You want to work your way out to the hull side. This way, as you're going in, coming out, you're not going to get your hair into any wet material. So if you start at the lowest point and kind of work your way up, it's going to be real, real good. But let me get going here. We got a lot of priming to do. You can find these Interlux products and much more at jamestowndistributors.com.